In this video, we're going to be looking at division of numbers with the same base. So, let's consider 5 to the power of 5 divided by 5 to the power of 3. If, the, if we write this as a fraction and in expanded form, we have 5 fives on the top and 3 fives underneath. One of the ones underneath will cancel with one of the ones on top because 5 divided by 5 is 1. We can do this again and again. What we're left with is 5 to the power of 2. What you notice about this is that 2 is really 5 take 3. So this leads us to our, our index lock. You can see that the however many you've got on the bottom are going to cancel with the same number from the top. So the difference between the two numbers is how many you're going to have as your index. So in our case, if we've got p to the power of 9 divided by p to the power of 6, 9 takes 6, we're going to be left with p to the power of 3. Yep. This brings us to our law that a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n minus n. Here we have some examples. 2 to the power of 5 divided by 2 to the power of 3 is 2 to the power of 2. 5 take 3 is 2. 11 to the 6 divided by 11 cubed is 11 cubed. Because 6 take 3 is 3. g to the 6 divided by g to the 5 is equal to g. Now 6 take 5 is 1. And referring back to the previous video, when you've got an index of 1, you don't write it in. y to the power of 4 divided by y squared is equal to y squared. Because 4 take 2 is 2. And even in the last one, where we've got something that looks a lot more complex, the same principle applies. So we've got x plus 2y all to the power of 6 is divided by x plus 2y to the power of 2. We're going to end up with x plus 2y, which is the base, all to the power of 6 take 2, which is 4. You've just seen what happens when we use division with uh, indexes. So. Again, same way we did when we did multiplication. The larger problems tend to be breaking down, broken down into a whole lot of the little ones which are very simple to use. So for example, we have 7 to the power of 8 divided by 7 to the power of 3. That's going to be 7 to the power of 8 take 3, which is 5. If we have p to the power of 7 divided by p to the power of 6. That's going to be p to the power of 7 takes 6, which is p to the power of 1, or just p. So those are simple. Let's take a look at what happens when we're working with a problem that looks a lot bigger than that. So let's do something like 56a squared b cubed divided by 8ab squared. As with multiplications in this case, our numbers don't have um, an in, a base and an index, so let's just do it on 56 divided by 8, 7 eighths of 56, so the number 7. Here we have a to the power of 1, sorry, to 2, a to the power of 1, 2 take 1, is 1, so we just have a. Then we've got a b cubed divided by a b squared, so that's b to the power of 3 take 2, which is also 1, so which is 7 a. Let's do another one. 3 power of 5, a squared x cubed y divided by 3 to the power of 3 a, x, okay, so let's take a look. Here we have our numbers have got a base and an index. So we're going to maintain the base and work on the index. So division, 3 to the 5 divided by 3 to the 3 is going to be 3 to the 5 take 3, which is 5 squared, uh, 3 squared. A squared divided by A is going to be a to the power of 2 take 1, which is A. X cubed, X to the power of 1, is going to give me 
three take two is three take one is two, and there's no y over here, so we're just going to have a one. I don't like that too. And that's it. Done.